Hey everybody, welcome to Kingdom Death. I'm Joe, this is my channel, and normally you don't see me here, so I hope it's a treat for those of you that are like, oh, what's Joe look like? I don't want to watch the, uh, the live videos and see what that is. Here you go, on the regular channel. Um, we're going to play the Giga Lion. This is a special for the 666 subscriber line, and if you are a fan of Kingdom Death, if you've been part of the Kickstarters, you know that that's kind of a, a milestone that gets reached and I figure why not continue that as a player and be cool for the community. There's a few things that I am going to do that is different than what you're going to do. If you get a box like this, uh, number one is the gear grids are already assigned. Everybody's going to have that for the vignette. If you're going to do, uh, you should play the vignette first. The vignettes are pretty cool because they kind of show new people how the game is played, and you take out a lot of the fiddly stuff that might make it difficult for a new player. They can just kind of understand the rules and how the equipment works, and then they'll be like, oh, everything was so cool, I want to have a cool axe, or I want to have a cool this or that. Um, I've just plopped those into these. Um, everybody uses them for gear. They're coin collecting sheets, and they are fairly cheap. You can find them anywhere. They're just two by two inch. Uh, sheets and I've added the community edition cards you can get from Fen Paints on Patreon or you can get them from the community edition Patreon and that just uh, sets up the abilities and specializations and all that kind of stuff in a smaller format so this character has whip specialization it's already there it's ready to go he also had the leather uh, armor set so I don't have to use a big uh, armor card uh, I can use this. It's all set up. Easy to utilize. Um, the other thing that goes along with these. Since I have the blue card. Goes with the blue. Goes with the blue. As you can see. Um, you'll be able to tell the characters apart with that. When I say plus two or plus one. Those are from tokens. Uh, equipment. And anything else is from uh, natural stuff that they've, they've gotten for themselves. The character names will be there. If I need to reference them, I'll swap them back and forth and do my best to keep you informed of what's going on and what to check for and all that kind of business. Um, and that's just m making my life a little bit easier. Uh, you will get all of those cards on these cards and they'll tell you exactly what each one of the characters that comes with it is their personality what they want all that kind of fun stuff why the lovelorn rock is such a big deal for uh rock knight why uh whips why the gore armor why uh the horn all that kind of stuff going on for these characters if you were trying to build these characters for yourself it wouldn't take a lot i think you can just do it with the basic set and the gorm so if you wanted to by the Giga Lion set, tell the story of these four and get to this level. Um, you can play it through, I believe, with just a Gorm. That's pretty easy to get. It's almost always on the store, and you can enjoy that. Other stuff on the table that you will not get as part of your Kingdom Death set are these terrain pieces. They're from Axolotl, uh, Axolotl Gaming, and I have. The regular terrain stuff underneath so if i have to set a character on top i can just take it away and then um terrain piece is still underneath it and then i can pop it back when i want to because it's an aesthetic choice more than a gameplay choice and uh yeah i painted those up myself uh if you want to get them printed for yourself i would recommend a resin printer and there is now a version two of these axolotl ones um these are all version one the version two ones are a little bit more detailed and um, I would get them if I hadn't paid a bunch of money for these ones to get printed out with uh, water-soluble supports uh, because of the way the overhangs are set up. And technology just, it's getting better all the time and cheaper all the time. And I bought these a long time ago, so it was expensive then. Um, that being the case, I've got myself set up with damage tokens for the monster. I've got myself with the hit locations and the AI deck as assigned by the, the monster. I believe the monster's turn goes first, so they will get to do things first. And after that, 
we will do our best. Uh, you can assign the characters however you'd like. I'm hoping that the character with the free block will be the tank. We'll see how things go. Um, yeah, the only character with range, I'd like to get them up on the rock, being able to hit the line from wherever they are set up. They also get extra speed, so they can just do 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 with those darts, and uh, that part is pretty cool. Um, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I haven't run it, and we're going to do our best. So if you can read the cards, great. If you can't, I'm going to do my best. There are only three cards, I think, that are different than the, um, the regular White Lion stuff. So if you have the game, you can just read it out of the White Lion. If you only have Tabletop Simulator, there are um, also the Showdown. They've made their own kind of version of uh, Tabletop Simulator that you can buy. And all of the backers have a copy of it if you want to play with a backer. Um, and uh, you, you can play the game there if you don't know anything about the game and you're just interested in it and you want to see how it plays. The 1.6 stuff is supposed to be coming in May 2020, and uh, that's when a lot more people will jump on. They sold, I think it's 40,000 units, so I know a lot of people just bought tons of the boxes just to sell the models, um, so I, I know there's a bunch of people that did that, but there's probably 30,000 out in the wild. There's a lot of people buying things, and there's, they're re-upping for thousands more then uh, this game's going to be around for quite a while. I hope you enjoy it. I will try to be exciting. And there's never a guarantee on that. But we'll see what we can do. If you want someone who's a lot more interesting to watch, I would recommend Beast of War or uh, Hit Points Gaming. They're always fun and they do full campaigns. They're, they have the, the drive and the patience to make it through full campaigns and I'm going to be able to make it through on camera just this game. So we'll see how it all works out. Sounds like I got dice in my cup. I prefer dice in a cup as opposed to dice towers because I learned that I could trick the dice tower to make outcomes how I wanted, um, depending on the angle that I threw it at and different things. So this seems a little more random. I've seen magicians be able to stack and do things with dice, but I haven't figured that part out so I can feel like I'm not cheating. That being the case, I'm your fat bastard for uh, this round. Let's see what the monster's gonna do. So, a monster will pull an AI card. We start with Smart Cat. Reveal the top 10 AI cards one at a time. Put the first two mood cards revealed into play and then shuffle the deck. So, one, two, the mood, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two mood. So, We'll shuffle the deck as instructed. That's a shuffle. There's not a lot of cards, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then archive smart cat. So that means get rid of it. Um, I make these little boxes, my white lines in this one. So I will archive it in here, which also acts. Kind of like a wound. I don't have any harps, so it'll be hard to get rid of this. Uh, when this comes into play, draw an AI, so I have to draw an AI for Bloodthirsty. And when a survivor suffers damage, for any reason, you put a token on Bloodthirsty, and at the start of each monster turn, if it has three or more tokens, it gets a free action. So every time it damages anybody, for any reason, we're going to add tokens. And then Enraged, when this comes into play... Add an AI card. When Enraged uh, gets one damage per monster level. This is a level two Giga Lion. So there will be three extra damage for this. Uh, when the survivor suffers any dismembered severe injury or is killed, they discard Enraged. So this may be around for a while. Um, that sucks. Okay. Uh, Bloody Claw. Closest survivor with the most bleeding tokens. As far as I'm aware, nobody has any bleeding tokens. So there is no survivor. Um, and then if there's no target, you sniff. Uh, since they all have equal bleeding tokens, I think you just pick one at random. And 
Uh, I like to use the universal cards. Ah, they can get out of the box. My arms are long enough. So these are the universal cards. If you haven't used them, that's what they are. And they help you just randomly choose whatever color is going to be associated with it, whatever gender is going to be associated with it, you pick from there. And okay, so that will be her. And bottom. All right, she has two evasion. And this attack is going to be for two with plus one speed, so it's going to be attack for three. Hits on fours. So. That sucks. So three hits. Um. Let's see if I can dodge any or anything with that. Each one of these is going to be for four da or five damage. So head, body, and hand. Um, that's going to get rid of all armor and give. Severe injury to the head, so I'm going to dodge one. And that leaves me with, and then that'll dodge the one to the head. And that leaves me with nothing on the body, but a light injury. And same thing on the hand. light injury. So we're not at a severe injury yet. Um, but it did take two sets of damage, so those two bloodthirsties go on there. Um, and after damage, uh, suffer uh, minus one survival. So now she's going to be down to two. Survival. And is going to gain two bleeding tokens. So, reach. Nope. They're in here, though. It works a lot better when I'm not standing over it. Two bleeding tokens to go along with that. Um,. Yeah, so all that sucked. He moved up in order to do that attack. And then a random survivor in range, since everything is in range, we'll pull another random survivor card. Uh, that will be that one. Uh, move and attack. So speed is now three, same as before. Accuracy is 2 plus, and red does not have any evasion. Okay, so uh, one will miss, two will hit. Let's see if I want to dodge anything, if anything's going to hit me where I can dodge it. It's going to do five damage. One to the waist and one to the body. I have four armor on the body and the waist. Um, I think I'm going to have to save the dodge for another attack. And that's going to lead to light injuries on both. Uh, sorry, that was damage one, so there is not actually light injury. Not that it's going to matter, because they were for four. And then after damage, target gains a bleeding token. So... Rock Knight has 
one bleed. And that puts another one of these here. And that means the turn is over. And at the start of each monster turn. Okay, so that was the end of the monster turn. Okay. Monsters up front. Uh, I can get rid of all the tokens right now. A couple of different ways. Um, if I wanted to, there's two bleed tokens. I can get rid of them and stand up. Uh, I think I'm going to use it to stand up and not have to worry so much about it. I know that I want to crawl up on this rock. So I'll use the action first to do that. And then I know I don't want to be adjacent to the monster. So I'm going to use it to go corner here. If it's problematic, get rid of the thing. Just I thought maybe it would bounce, but I guess it's not going to bounce. That's why I have the terrain underneath. Okay. Um, and then I know I, I can actually, I can pounce with this character. So if I do that, I hit the pounce. That's going to allow me to, I don't have anything extra there. Um, activate a melee weapon for plus one strength, and the melee weapon is a beast knuckle, so that's two speed. Don't have any other things, so it's just gonna be two. It's gonna hit on sixes, and I think I get something extra when I pounce. Um, I gain one accuracy for the attacks. So. It's going to hit on, it says, gain one accuracy for your next attack this turn, but it's going to be a pounce. And that means I get to move, and I activate a melee weapon with plus one strength. So I don't know if that means as part of the pounce for your next attack. I'm going to guess that it's that's what it's supposed to mean. It's an assist on pounce. So... I'm going to be with two, hitting on fives. I don't do nothing. It doesn't matter. So, uh, two whiffs. Waste of time. I'm going to probably get beat up somewhere along the line. Okay. I probably didn't want to end my turn next to him. But I'm going to guess that something's going to happen that causes this lion to move around a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I can't hit from this location, so I'm going to move to have a whip here. I can discard a mood if, if I hit with her, so I'm going to move... Uh, I'm going to move in one. Okay. So that hits from the blind spot. Uh, if this guy goes in a straight line, then this is still not going to get hit by it. So I don't have to worry about that much. Okay. Now I've moved. I hit for plus one luck, which means on a nine, unless I want to do it with uh, fist and tooth, which case I would hit on eight. Um, I will go with the three six three on this guy because I want to be able to try to discard moves. I don't get any perfect hits, but I do hit for two. That's this one and this one. Uh, the paunch here, I basically have to critically wound. So we'll see how this goes. Crit on nines, 
toughness of this guy is 10. I got three strengths, so I mean seven. So I'm going to wound on a seven and do a lot more on a nine. So I do wound. So uh, unfortunately, it, this gives plus five toughness to wound this location, which means I do not wound. And that means that it will just do the reflex. The giant uh, white giga lion leaps into the air, place the monster so the attacker is in the purple space. Okay. And then full move in a straight line. So it's going to turn around. And it's going to be here. And its movement is 8. And so it will full move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And that is going to um, cause grab, I think, to happen. It has this trait involved. Whenever the monster collides, it snags with its hooked claws. They suffer grab, and when a survivor uh, suffers grab, you roll to see if they get a bleed token. She ignores the bash because she's in leather armor. Rolls a one, and that does not get a bleed token, so that part's pretty cool. But she's still going to get grabbed. She's just going to be standing in front of him. Uh, as part of the grab function. And place the target knocked down in front of the monster, and they suffer uh, two damage to a random hit location. So they're not going to get knocked down. They're not, they are bashed, and they are going to take two damage to a random hit location. Two damage to the head. Um... This is not something I can dodge, but I still have armor there. So I'll just take the two damage to armor and call that a day. Um, because I'm not knocked down, I think I can still roll to wound this. I didn't, I have not been taken out of range, so I'm going to roll to wound it. The beast heal. And that's a crit. And this will cause a persistent injury. The white lion will be knocked down. So they're knocked down. And I'm going to read along. Um, I'm going to remove for the wound. It says because of the whip, I can. Instead of moving into the wound stack, move it into the discard pile. No, I want to kill this lion. So that hits, and um, you gain the persistent injury. Whenever it moves, if it rolls a 1, it'll get knocked down. So we'll keep that persistent injury in play. The guy... I want to get hit by everything is way, way, way over there. So that is uh, unfortunate. I don't think there's anything else I can do. I don't think I can give anybody anything. But what I can do is try to get closer to the problem. One, two, three, four, five. I can dash to get closer, but it's not really going to do me any good. Um, I could dash to get into the grass, though, which will help me evade. I have five survival. Um, I'm going to need a lot of it, so I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. I'm going to go ahead and sit there. That ends everybody's turn. This starts 
The monster sitting up. Tokens go away. There's three of them. This means uh, this lion will perform a basic action. A basic action is host a survivor. Uh, it will attack for three because of the speed boost. And it hits on fours with her. All fours. There were three fours there. So she hits every single one of them. He hits every single one. Let's see what happens. Uh, that's two feet and a body. All for four. I need to dodge one. Is that all? I need to dodge one so I can, and it'll be one to the feet. Um, as far as the body goes, that's a severe injury. So it's either a severe injury to the body or it's a severe injury to the feet. Um, either way, she's going to die, possibly, from it. So... Uh, Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Got a roll. On the severe injury table, and where did my cards go? Out of here. Oh, yeah, they're right next to it. I got the severe injury tables on cards. Makes things a little bit easier. Uh, also, from that same place, I got all the by two cards so rather than have to go through the, all the stuff five am i dead uh destroyed back sharp cracking so minus two permanent movement you can no longer activate any gear that has plus two strength which is the whip so no more whip gain one bleeding token um Getting pretty close on the bleeding tokens to problem time. So I'm not knocked down. And it would take an action in order to remove all that. I might use the horn in order to do the same thing. Um, but anyway, that's one token. There's nothing additional to that, but attack throws those guys on and that sets the back injury movement at three that is unfortunate the other unfortunate thing is i'm pulling an ai card now power swat closest threat still her uh speed of two Um, one miss, one hit. Damage is five. I already used the dodge. Let's see what happens here. Body. That's another severe injury. Big money. Seven. So seven becomes ruptured spleen, gain two uh, bleeding tokens, which sets her at five, which means she's dead. So blue is now off the board. Uh, this bloodthirsty, I believe, goes away. Uh, no, that one doesn't go away. Enraged goes away. Yeah, so you discard Enraged and get rid of two of those tokens. Well, that was not nice. So, there's that. Um, that's the monster's turn. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's uh, quite a distance for that uh, set of darts. You can only go eight with the darts. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm in the blind spot. Uh, I can move stuff around on this table. Since blue is no longer present, the monster controller will move from green to yellow. See if that gets any I don't think it does matter. All right, we have a Gax. We also have a shield, and we get a free guard action. Um, if anyone was next to me, they would get positive speed, and that would be cool. But uh, I don't think I'm going to do anything with that right now. I do have reach two, uh, and on a perfect hit, I gain plus four strength. So I'm going to hit with the Gax, which will hit on five. That's two. I missed entirely. Great job. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here. Uh, I can blow the horn and give everybody some extra armor right now, but I don't think I'm going to do that just yet because it'll be my only way to get rid of uh, any fleeting tokens. So there's that. Nothing else going on, no reactions, nothing to do other than the monster their turn so alert is a new mood when a survivor moves into a space in the zone of death their movement stop their movement and gain the priority token and then perform a basic action and if the monster gets knocked down you discard alert moves into he's already there he didn't move or change direction of any way so we're in a good position for what's going on right now uh, I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit him with the Gax. Same two. Hitting on five. Let's see what happens. Whiff. And a whiff. Um, Uh, getting up and coming down from so I need to get within six one two one two three four five six one two four five I can't really do anything from where I'm standing what I can do is get into uh, a better evasion space. So we'll do that. Um, let the monster take their next turn. Sorry. Do I want that one? It's within four. One, two, one, two, three, four. So I don't want that. I'm going to move down to this one. So I don't want to trigger that. Be closer to evasion. Uh, and if that's going to be the case, then maybe I will come down. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's not the monster. Revenge! Last survivor to wound in range. And the last survivor to wound is dead. 
closest threat in field of view. So that uh, move and attack. So it will be a speed of three. I get a free block because of guard. And the guard is free because of the set. It works on twos. I don't have any additional evasion. That means there are two hits, one of which is going to be blocked. So let's see. A body or waste. I'm going to block the body since it's going to happen more often. And then that is going to be a uh, three damage to the waste. I still have some armor there. So that works that. If I'm reading this correctly. Yeah, I got a free block. I don't have to spend survival. And I have the shield, so all of the qualifications are in there. I got to block for free. Okay. And then uh, the white line, isolates prey, move a uh, full move away from all threats, target suffers grab. So he's going to be here, knocked down. Since he's not prepared, doesn't help anything. Nothing else helps anything. Uh, nothing else works. Okay. So the grab is going to be. Two damage to a random hit location. One to see if I roll a ten to see if he gets a bleeding token. Does not. And then random hit location gets two. That is the head. Can't block it because that's not the kind of thing it is. Okay. Um, okay, that goes there. Uh, not a lot else I can do. He doesn't stand up, but he can be encouraged. So, um, nobody has moved. Everybody's still in the same space. So I think alert is still in play. Nobody's moved. So I'm not discarding alert yet, but I can move into this space now. And I can move one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three. I can move here. One, two, three, four. So yeah, I can move there. Chuck darts at him. And I can use yellow guy to encourage for one. That will Need two survival for him. Okay. He's fairly well protected. This guy stands back up. Okay. Um, let's swing and see what happens with the Gax. So, swing in for two. Bring it a miss. Does not. But I have speed tokens on Rock Knight. And that allows me to fire three darts at the lion. I have three additional strength, which means it's going to hit on sevens and it's going to wound on fours. So. Doesn't matter because it doesn't hit anything. If we could hit something, man, we'd be doing a whole lot better, huh? Um, we are going to get a free defense uh, in that circumstance. Um, the monster extends its claws and it's going to grab. So, suffering at a random hit location. I think that should have happened actually last as well so let's catch ourselves up 
with a random hit location. Uh, he did take some damage, so that was one of those from last time. He'll take damage here again. So, and there, random hit location. Actually, there's two of them. Getting caught up from here. Body and foot. Uh, he's on light. Body. Two for the foot. And I think that's all the housekeeping stuff. Um, he's knocked down. At the end of each monster turn, we're actually one ahead of ourselves. So he will be knocked down on the next one. So. It will be fine. Pull the AI card. AI card draw. All right, combo claw. So he would be the threat in range. He would get attacked. Uh, at the end of it, he's going to get grabbed. So it'll be an attack for three. The accuracy. On four plus. So two are hit. They are going to do two damage. And that is to the waist uh, and to the body. He is going to dodge. Got so much survival. Dodge to the waist, take two to the body. And, um, you know, we forgot to also do some knockdowns with the beast's heal. Let's just see what would have happened. I don't think anything would have hit. This is a crit. Yeah, no, it, nothing would have happened. That movement didn't do jack. Okay, so. Um, and it did not do any additional damage, so the combo claw just goes away. We've already calculated for the bash uh, from the grab of being knocked down. Um, we've got tokens, and it's at the start of the monster turn. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think they're going to do the basic action was part of. That, uh, no, will be part of the next one. Figure it out. We'll have to do monster. You guys can keep me honest. It's four in the morning, so my brain, who knows. But it's quiet. They're not playing Beatles music outside, which is going to make it much more difficult to get, you know, anything on, on the YouTube here. So that part is uh, satisfactory. Okay, chuck some darts. Perfect hit. Rock Knight does have something that happens on perfect hits. Uh, what do you have on perfect hit? Um, I get to double the wound attempt on the first selected hit location. If I was attacking with a club, which I do not do from a range, so finally get to oh, I just want a wound eight. I got five, six strength. It is not a crit, uh, and I don't have extra luck, so it's not a crit. But it is going to do a wound. So that's it. It doesn't do the, the really bad stuff. That part was cool. Um, let's have yellow encourage. And uh, 
So let's swing for two. I guess you don't count as adjacent for yourself, so the boss menu doesn't really do much. Eight and a seven. Did we actually hit something with that gax? Oh my gosh. Oh my god. We hit twice. So we got the soft belly and the maw. Uh, let's do the one without the failure and see what happens. We have plus four strength. So it's six or above. Perfect. Beautiful crit. Get that wound off right now. Um, persistent injury organ trail. You gain a random white lion resource. This is a vignette. Don't care. Um, at the start of every monster turn before it draws an AI card, it could get an extra wound. So that part will be cool. Um, yeah, so that's cool. So if it moves and at the beginning of its turn, there's a possibility we could hurt it. Let's roll that one and hope we get another. We get a critical failure. Uh, the monster roars triumphantly. Roll 1d10. And if it's a 4 plus, you suffer 1 brain damage per monster level and get knocked down. 5. Just enough. However, we ignore intimidate actions, but this is not an intimidate action. It doesn't say intimidate. So it's going to take two brain. I am no longer insane. So if that affects anything, uh, I don't think it does just yet. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. And I get knocked down. So there's that. Okay. Um... Not a lot left to do from here. I can try to give armor, and now might be a good time to do that. And that will get rid of the bleeding tokens as well. So I'm going to use the Gorn. Uh, I'm going to use the Gorn Horn business, and it's going to stand me up. Oh, you know what? It just gives plus one to all hit locations. Um, I'm going to wait then. I don't care that they're they're knocked down. The vicious... So yeah, he's going to suffer two to a random location. Body. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the armor on the body. Okay, we said that at the beginning of the monster turn, here, we're going to see if they are dragging their organs around. Let's roll the one. Roll the two. Doesn't help. Okay. Basic action is going to happen. Uh, closest survivor in field of view in range. So that's still him. He does still, I believe, get to block. No. You have to be standing. So. Okay. It's going to be free speed. Three hits no matter how you roll it. Hand, foot, and head. Uh, I can take all of those without injuries. Um... Those we'll put back up there. Now we're going to pull an AI card. Terrifying Roar. Intimidate. And he's the only one that's immune to Intimidate. Roll one per target. 
It's higher than their courage. So, uh, he's immune. He's got five or six. And Rock Knight has no courage. Is that right? That might be right. Um, so, okay. Rock Knight first, then. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a nine. So it's going to, no matter what, get knocked back six. Uh, suffers one brain damage per monster level. Okay. One, two, six. Luckily, didn't get knocked into that. Okay, I didn't. Uh, okay. And then two, it doesn't do anything to our very brave Gorn user. Furthest survivor in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Furthest survivor in range. And perform a basic action against them. So that is uh, hitting for three. The terrain gives plus two evasion. Uh, so fours and above. Two hits. Both to the body. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take both. Okay, doesn't do that much to me right now. Okay, then that'll allow me to hit him with guitars or pounce. I just hit him with guitars. Um, how many? Encourage with survival. Uh, on the monster's turn, letting him get back up. Then it will become. Green's turn to be the monster controller again. I haven't really even been caring about the monster controller thing. Insanity hasn't really meant much. Okay. Um, I could attack with the guitar. Try to get something happening. And if I wound, it'll be minus one toughness until the end of the attack. So I'll be able to hit. If I had two, then I think that matters. Or if I had surge, it would matter. Okay, I'm going to hit for two. Uh, actually, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, five, four, five. So I want to move out of the way and hit. I want to move out of the way, period. So I'm going to just hit him with the guitar. Hit him with the guitar for two. Um, let's see what happens. Ooh, perfect hit. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything for him. Um, four strength. 
five does not count to ten, but it does give a failure. Full move monster straight, cancel all hits, and form grab. So, he's been grabbed. Monster's going to go there. He's knocked down. Roll, see if he gets a bleeding token. He does not. And then to a random hit location, or a random location, to his hands, he's going to take two damage. Okay. Kind of sucked. That one. Um. Uh, I want to do that. That will put me still on alert here. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And he'll turn. That gets rid of this. Um, no. That actually stays in place. Until something else happens. Um, he's going to basic action. So he's going to take three swipes at me. And I will be able to block one. They all three hit. I don't have any evasion. Waste. Um, I'm going to block. None of these were to the hand, huh? So. <laughs> I'm going to dodge one. I don't think I can dodge. You can't spend survival when it's not on your action. Or what, unless it's on the monster's turn. So I can't dodge it. Uh, is that the way it is? I don't think I can do that. Anyway, I'm going to block one to the body so or actually have to block it to the waist since that will be a severe injury so those two go in um and they're both going to be i don't have to roll on any tables so that's the only good part but they are both severe injuries and i get knocked down I'm only knocked down until the beginning of the next monster turn, or the end of the next one. So I'll be able to stand up when he resolves what he's going to do. Um, yeah, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I'm just going to let it go. Next, next thing it's going to do... Um, since it was next to him, he's going to take a grab action. So, or is that only at the end of monster turn? Each monster turn, at the end of each monster turn. So I don't have to do that yet. Oh, claw, closest threat facing in range. These two are not threats because they're knocked down. So this guy is. He'll jump over here. He will attack for three. I 
all three hit. Uh, okay. Two to the body. I can dodge one since it's his. So I'm going to dodge one to the body. Um, that's going to set at an injury to knock him down. Got one left on the head. Knocked down. Her down, whoever. These two will now stand. Alert is still in effect. So, not a lot I can do other than knock them down. If I move, yeah, it just moves into a space. So, if I try to get towards evasion or move anywhere, um, things are going to happen bad for me. So I think one of these folks still has survival. I'm going to encourage he of the rock and club. Green person. Get up and start hitting with a club. How's that sound? Uh, for two, seven, and three. All right, let's see how this goes. There are two speed, so it's going to hit for four. Um, it's on sevens, so there's one hit. Strange hand. On a nine. It is going to wound. So that's good. That's something. Um... I think I'm going to move into the evasion space, which will trigger alert. So they're no longer adjacent. Um, and that will cause basic actions to happen. So three hits on fours. Huh. Okay. One of these will get blocked. I'm standing. Two to the body, one to the foot. Um, I have to roll on the severe table for the body and the foot. Make it body, foot. They're ones, double death, right? Anytime you roll a one on a severe injury table, you're going to die. So I died both by uh, a blown bone fragment getting sent directly into my heart and a blood geyser shooting from the femoral artery killing in seconds. I think one kind of cancels out the other, but he's dead. So there's that. Um, yeah, I think they're just going to chew on me because there's so many wounds left to do. I have rolled terribly. I'm going to blame it being late at night, but that's okay. You die in Kingdom Death all the time. It's still a subscriber special. Um, so let's get rid of that one. 
that one. Move some stuff closer to be able to use it. Um, that's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be kingdom guy. All right. Uh, I don't think I can do anything else. Looking at the armor locations, there's not a lot going on as far as anything helpful. I'm going to go ahead and blow the Gorn, and it will allow everybody to get plus one in all hit locations uh, of armor. So, do that real fast. Two. Here. Four, two. Two, two, four. That will hopefully keep me around a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. He's gonna have to start hitting way harder in order to make that worthwhile. Okay. Um, that will also give. That there, and this is calculated. At the beginning of the monster turn, so there's going to be a basic action first. Uh, basic action is looking for closest survivor, so turning around, jumping back that way, uh, attacking for three. Oh boy, those are all hits. Too bad she can't turn around just let the rock get hit. Uh, face, waist, and body. Uh, survival. Just gonna happen. So, face. Waist and body. Uh, I think I'm already at severe hits on both. Oh, Matt. I think I have to roll for the body. Or actually, I'll dodge the body. I don't really have a choice there. And I had to survive. That's the first basic action. Now we've got to pull the AI card. Grass. There's no knockdown survivor. Um, on a speed of two, since they have this token. There are two hits for two damage. Body, which means we're going to have to roll. And to the legs. On a four, so the body probably dies. Uh, gaping chest wound, minus one permanent strength, and a bleeding token. So it's not dead, but now at two bleeding tokens. And instead of three strength, now it's two strength. And then afterwards, knock down in front of the monster. Move away from all threats, full move. One, two, three, four, five, eight. And 
Master. Oi. Pounce to get up there, but it's not really going to affect anything. Mm. Yeah. One damage per monster level for that grab. And uh, light injury. Uh, one, two, five. It's not within the of death business. I can theoretically dash, but I don't have any survival. Um, I'm gonna have to sit on it. Okay. Can't encourage because I don't have any survival. So a thing is going to happen. Uh, actually, they moved. Let's just see if anything over the last, I don't know, two or three things I forgot. No. Uh, let's see if it would have been knocked down at any point in time. Let's do that again. I totally forgot for all of these injury things. Just for my own peace of mind. No, I would have got nothing. So. <laughs> That affect a thing. Um, so they're grabbed. I uh, wouldn't have got skewered from those extra things. That's fine. Away from all threats. If it's grabbing again, at the end of this turn, not a bad place to be, since this would be the threat pushing them that way. Roll again. Two damage. And that's going to end up. body, two damage, Rock Knight is going to dodge that, and that's the end of their survival. Um, but she'll be able to stand up. And now she's got extra evasion. Uh, she still has strength, so still has two speed. So for four, clubbing them in the face for four. Okay, clubbing them in the face for four. Hits on sevens. So that means that there are two that hit. Do the one with the failure before the one with the reflex. What was I doing? Uh, six uh, plus three plus two. So that one is going to wound. I discard something. It 
doesn't matter. Reflexed it. Uh, full move forward. Seven, eight. Monster moved, so let's see if it gets injury. It doesn't get an injury. No, that was to see if it got knocked down. It didn't get knocked down. But now we've both been grabbed here. So we're both going to get knocked down. And for a red, to the hand, for yellow, to the hand. You heard it rattling. Severe injury for red. Just armor off. All right, Red. Try not to die. Died. So, uh, what does a hand of one get you? You just die of shock. Your vision fades along the side of your mangled armless torso because your hands got just brrr, shaken off. All right, yellow. With guitars, um, let's see if the monster. Nope, doesn't take any extra injuries from its injury, even though its intestines are just kind of laying out there. Uh, we don't have anything to do over there, except we do because it took damage and that made it up to three. Now we have a basic attack to resolve. It's on force. Two, two of them. Okay. Waste and body. Um, for two damage. Already knocked down. Two severe injury in the body. We'll get up though, so that part is fine. Um, I don't know what else you can do other than punch him in the face. Yeah, two. Oh. I gotta pull an AI card. Vicious Claw, only one survivor, so it's on fours. Three hits. Uh, this is two to the head and one to the body. Um, Survives the two to the head, just gets rattled around with the armor. Severe injury to the body. Knocked down. Get a collapsed lung, two bleeding tokens. Because the effect gave one. Two bleeding tokens, minus one movement. Um, knockdown. Basic, uh, there. Grab will go into effect, take a damage to a random hit location. Waste. No armor left. Um, it 
is able to stand up. Okay. No. That was grabbed for the end of the turn. He's still knocked down. So, running a card. Power SWAT. There are no threats. There are no threats. So sniff. Sniff. Uh, the monster gains plus one accuracy and plus one luck. Um, I think Sniff is... If it's getting accuracy and luck, then... And then it gets put in the... Plus one accuracy. Here it gets plus one. Um. I don't know if Sniff placing it in with the giant pendulous paunch on top is part of the Sniff action. I think it's just the plus ones. So, there's that. Okay, then I'm able to get up. I'm going to hit for two. Hits on sixes. Perfect hit. This is the character that has nothing to do with perfect hits, though, so there's that. Beast's Paw. Um, six and above. It's on a five. Does nothing but fails. And for two damage plus, they'll do the basic action. So they're going to be able to hit on ones. Anything but a one. And they're going to do additional three damage. So the three that normally happen. There's three hits. Two to the feet, one to the head. Um, the additional damage means it's for six so the severe it's not a it's a heavy injury it's not a severe but the head is a severe injury on a five to the head I mean what's gonna happen with that? Intracranial hemorrhage, you can no longer gain or use survival. The injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain a bleeding token. Um, didn't we have a bunch of extra bleeding tokens around here? Yeah. That's three as far as my count for bleeding tokens. Um, get two more. I'm gonna, and I'm adjacent, so I'm gonna suffer grab. Let's see where I get grabbed. Damage done to the waist. Uh, that is now heavy injury. Monster is going to perform their basic action in addition to any other actions, so three. Of course, there are three hits. Um, 
the body, the waist, both have to get rolled. So, body is a four, the waist is a ten. So, for the body, I guess, uh, gaping chest wound, which provides a bleeding token. So, now we're at four bleeding tokens. And then, we got a ten on, was it the legs? It doesn't really matter. Usually the tens survive. Uh, it was the waist it would be a knockdown but I was already knocked down it doesn't do much else okay now the regular AI terrifying roar no target so sniffing um, I mean I'm, I'm non-deaf so it would intimidate roll 1d10 Higher than the courage, they have a really high amount of courage. Five, I have more courage, so it's not going to do that. And we're back to another basic action. Rolling on that ground. Three hits. Body and waist, two body, what's going to happen to the body? A five and a two, so the body one's probably dead. Let's just see what the five is first. Uh, destroyed back, I think we might have already had that. So it's double destroyed back. Gaining a bleeding token, which is enough to now be dead from bleeding. Including an instant death where a bone fragment went into the heart. And then... Got another two. The waist. And that meant that I died a final breath with a long gasp. Gasp with the uh, utter words of bravery. But if anyone was alive to hear them... Adjacent survivors would get plus one survival. So we're all dead. We have been added to the uh, Giga Lions trophy area. You can pick a random survivor. And that will be the red one, which means the carrier of the Lovelorn Rocks face is now a member of the collection from the Giga Lions. So, that being the case, I did not win. I do not get to uh, take care of the strain card and all that kind of stuff, but I get to try again in the future, and that's not the worst thing in the world. It's still a fun game. It's just quarter to five in the morning for me, and I'd like to get some sleep. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll be able to hit it. Maybe I won't. Uh, you can put down whatever strategies you think would be better if you prefer to do that. Uh, I'm sure I missed some rules. I know I did, but I don't care. Um, it was still fun, even when you're going to die in Kingdom Death. Just the the path to obliteration of your, your survivors is always enjoyable. So if you've enjoyed this experience, let me know. And maybe I'll try to create more subscriber milestones or things to do. I've got a room full of other games to play. If you're interested in anything that you think might be fun in this context, then uh, let me know and I'll see if I have it and go from there. And uh, that'll be cool. If uh, you're not a subscriber, think about it. And you can see that the stuff I normally do is putting up uh, videos to inform everybody what's going on in the crowdsourcing space. Kickstarter, GameFound, uh, BackerKit's now starting to do pre-orders. If there was anything on Indiegogo, I'll try to find those too. 
and uh, I make videos. They go up to an hour, but I try to get them. It's a complete picture of everything that's on Kickstarter that you could back right now, so that it goes up and down week to week, but at least it tells you exactly what would be available, just like if you were going into a game store. That's kind of the idea that I'm going for. Um, you can put your money towards things, and if I see anything that's a scam outright, I'll let you know. If there's something that would be cool, but the page is bad, I'll talk about things that the page uh, could be doing to improve the experience of buying or your experience as a backer um, to make that uh, work both for you and for them. And a lot of people don't want to hear the tough love part, and that's okay too. Sometimes it's just what they need to hear. And you know, I try to be positive and constructive in everything that I do. But, uh, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, if you want to be part of it, the backers, not backers, subscribers have been pretty happy. And they become backers for a lot of different campaigns. So if there's stuff that uh, you think you feel bad because you missed out on it, if you follow the page, you won't miss out on it as much. Uh, because you'll be informed every week. Not only for board games like this, but um, RPGs. I cover those as well. So uh, a lot of the tabletop places, they won't touch RPGs. And I'm not afraid of that. So go from there. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, things you want to share, anything like that, questions about whatever was on the table, um, or even you can check out the rest of the Kingdom Death uh, playlist. and You'll see how to build all the little boxes of joy that uh, you'll see my Giga Lion and all of the survivors end up going back into safely, neatly. So their precious little bodies will never be exposed to uh, sunlight and other damaging, oxidizing, terrible things. Unless it's time for them to fight one more day, a Giga Lion, then uh, you can see how that all goes together. And maybe it'll help you have some ideas for your own. There. How cool is that? You guys have a good one. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. That would be helpful. Have a good one.